Hey everyone, Eric here, Mr. Fired Up Wealth. Today I'm excited to bring you the top 10 industrials and materials DGI, DGIF, dividend growth investing for fired stocks. And this is, of course, part of the series. So there's a total of six videos covering the 11 sectors in the stock market. Last week, we did healthcare, and prior to that, financials. And we also have an intro video. So if you haven't watched those, feel free to go back and take a look at those. Now, the reason that the some of the sectors are going to be combined together, because, of course, you're not going to have as, as much concentration percentage-wise in industrials, probably uh, compared to technology. And so it makes sense for industrials and materials to be con combined and lumped into one video because there is some overlap, and I think 10 picks is plenty for those two sectors. Now, if you haven't subscribed, please do. There's a couple videos left in the series. Click the little red button on the bottom right. There's also a little bell. Make sure you click that so you get notifications. Also, I encourage you, if you like the video, to hit the like button because it will help other people find the video. It gets it into the YouTube algorithm. And I also want to point out that we have added timestamps starting last week. And the reason I've done that for a couple reasons. One, for the dedicated folks that watch the entire video from front to, to end, I appreciate you very much, and please keep doing that. I encourage you to watch the whole video. But for you, for those that have watched the entire video, if you want to come back and maybe you want to look at just one stock and recap, it allows you to easily go back to that point of the video and not have to search through it. It also, of course, is good for people that maybe have found this video on a search and you're interested in just one particular company that you want to, to hear about. So the timestamps are in the comments, so go ahead and look in the comments. And you can click right on the ticker symbol of the stock you're interested. It'll jump right to that point in the video. Hopefully that's something that helps just make it a little bit easier for you to navigate uh, throughout the video. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, guys, let's kick this off with number one. And in case you're new here uh, with this whole series, these are not in any particular order. I'm going to give you 10 picks. At the end of the 10 picks, I'm going to give you an overview that's going to give you some very interesting stats and do a comparison of the 10 different companies and their 10-year uh, annualized growth rates, as, performance rates, as well as their five-year dividend growth rates and their dividend yields and so on. So you're gonna see that within a screener and actually see all 10 picks. And then after I do that, I'm gonna provide a few bonus picks that you can explore as well. So just kicking it off right away, number one, and this is Fidelity, if you're not familiar, this is Fidelity's website. And I'm gonna spend a little bit less time today uh, within the Fidelity website because you guys have already seen how I do that in the other videos. And I'm going to spend more time looking at other things like the websites and digging more into the actual company. So a real quick overview of, of number one is Roper, Roper Technologies, stock ticker ROP. And this does have a, a smaller yield. So if you're looking for higher yield, this might not be your Huckleberry, but it does have really good growth. And you'll see at the comparison at the end, it's one of the top performers. The reason I like it now, if you know anything about me, I am a big tech guy. Uh, my portfolio is very overweight in technology. I have a technology background. I actually work in the cloud infrastructure space. So I understand you know, most technology solutions very well, especially in the cloud space. And you'll see in a hurry that this company kind of falls right down my alley. Now, if you look at the company profile, it does say that it's in the sector of industrials, which of course is what we're covering today, industrials and materials. And it also says the industry within the sector is industrial conglomerates. And you'll find out quickly the reason for that is they own a ton of a bunch of other companies. Now, Roper itself has been around since the 1800s. But this company, the way we know it today, was actually founded in 1981. It's the way it's structured. But I'm going to show you their website in a minute. It's actually incredible how many these little companies that you've never probably heard of exist that this company, Roper, owns. Really quick, I want to do uh, just read the profile because I think it's important. And the website doesn't really do a great job of explaining what they really do. But once you dig into the different businesses they own, you can see very quickly what they do. Um, the first part of this, though, Roper Technologies designs and develops software and engineered products and solutions worldwide. The company operates in four segments, and this is important. And we're going to actually dig into these four segments on their website. Application software, network software and systems, measurement and analytical solutions, and process technologies. It offers application management software, software as a service. Hey, SaaS, this is right down my alley. Applications, uh, card systems, integrated security, toll and traffic systems, RFID, 
Uh, metering and remote monitoring products. Company off, also offers diagnostic and laboratory software, 3D measurement technology. I'm loving the sound of this. Let's dig into the website and see what this company, Roper, is all about. So when you go to their website, this is kind of blown in or zoomed in a little bit. Strategy and about, and you can come here and take a look yourself. It's just ropertech.com. I want to dig first into the application software. So here's the four business segments that we just covered. Look, this is just one business segment. I clicked on application software. Look at how many companies fall under Roper just in this segment. So Adderant, never heard of it. Maybe you have, I haven't. Headquartered in Atlanta, 35 year history. They support 3,200 clients in more than 30 countries. And this deals with law firms. What does that have to do with industrials, right? It's a conglomerate. So it has all kinds of different things under here. The uh, Seaboard Group, world's leading provider for campus card and cashless systems, food and nutrition service management software. Well, that's, that sounds pretty interesting. I like that. Um, Clinis, this one here, Clinicis, was founded in 1988 and also does European market. It uh, does laboratory information management solutions. So we're talking, you know, medical labs. Here's a, another global software company, passionate in patient care, some more medical. Dell Tech, I used to actually use this at a company that I worked for, and we switched from Dell Tech to Oracle, and it wasn't really great, but it got the job done, and I'm sure for smaller businesses, you know, it's probably a good solution, but it says it deals with 23,000 organizations, and this is enterprise software, so uh, it'll do, like, for example, your PTO, if you're familiar with, maybe you have Workday or something at your job, but you do your PTO in here, you do your time cards, uh, your payroll, your benefits, all those kind of different HR things on there. Horizon Software, this is K through 12, uh, back management, inventory management, menu planning. This is a, a Roper Technologies company. It's been around for 25 years. Cloud-based control tower empowers organizations to be nimble and efficient by providing global supply chain transparency. So this is getting a little bit more um, in, in the industrials. But to this point, we haven't seen a whole lot of that. This one is financials, uh, strata decision technology. Cloud-based financial analytics and performance platform for healthcare. I mean, okay. Uh, SunQuest information is more laboratory. Let's go. This that's just one business segment. Here's another one. Network, software, and systems is a second business segment. Look at all these, and I'm not going to go through all of them. But let's just let's just pick Link Logistics. What do these guys do? 1990, they developed Load Link. So this is freight industry first load connecting brokers dealing with you know transportation. Soft writers, what's this one? Provides uh, pharmacies. You know, Transcore does over 80 years, it says. This, um, this has led its industry by developing next generation open road tolling and advanced traffic management systems, including RFID technology. This is pretty cool stuff. Measurement and analytical solutions is another business segment. Again, a ton of different companies. So this is a conglomerate. They go out and buy these companies and just scoop them up. And a lot of these companies have been around for a long time. Here's Logitech, um, world leader in many aspects of material analysis. Northern Digital NDI is a Canadian company that does optical and electromagnetic measuring systems. That sounds pretty cool. I don't know anything about that. Maybe you do. <laughs> um, Pioneer, this one here is a pioneer of automatic leak, leak deten uh, detection equipment for automotive, medical, and pharmaceutical. So this is really interesting. Very, very diverse. Let's go to process technologies, the last business segment really fast here. There's all the different ones. I wanted to point out this one in particular because Roper Pump is, is this has an established in 1857. So... The company, as we know it today, was is officially 1981, but Roper actually has been around since 1800s. Um, you know, and it started with 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 pump with doing pumps like this. So this is Roper Pump Company, is a worldwide leader of rotary positive displacement technology based fluid handling solutions. Offers a variety of cutting edge cutting edge application based products and services specifically tailored for customers in the oil and gas industrial transportation and power generation market segments. So you can see where this company started really in the industrials and it you know, really branched out and diversified in a lot of different areas within technology. Um, some of them are you know, medical and pharmaceutical that don't really have much to do you know, with industrials or, you know, or materials, either one. So this one I really like though. Again, if you're looking for a lot of yield, this is probably not the one for you, but in terms of growth and performance and just 
the fact that it's technology related and it's something I'm comfortable with. I like this. And again, these aren't in any order, but this is probably one of my favorite picks out of the 10. All right, guys, moving right along to number two, we have Lockheed Martin Corporation stock ticker LMT. I do need to disclose that my brother-in-law actually works for them as a programmer, has been there a very long time. So full disclosure, uh, I do not own any individual um, shares of LMT. I certainly wish I did. It's been on my shopping list for five years, and I always say that I'm going to buy it, and I never do. And it's up 43.57% over 52 weeks. It's got a 2.2% dividend yield, and the PE is reasonable at 199 um, it's been a top performer for a long time. It uh, you'll you'll see the numbers towards the end. You can see the earnings per share beat you know twenty three cents, sixty four cents, and twenty six cents. Of course, with this uh, you know this this presidency with 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 uh, Donald Trump, they've spent quite a bit of money on defensive infrastructure, and in his new budget plan, that trend seems to be continuing. So uh, there's no guarantee of who's going to win the election, of course, but. If, uh, if, if Donald Trump wins uh, another four years, you can definitely bet that there'll be a lot more defense spending. It's a commitment of his. Um, even without that, I see Lockheed Martin as a company that will do well for a very long time. And it's something that you really, if you're looking for an industrials play, um, there's a lot of really good picks in the aerospace and defense uh, industry. You know, so here we go, a sector industrials, industry, aerospace, aerospace and defense. It's actually located, the headquarters is located in Maryland. Um, Bethesda Studios is also there too, where they make Fallout, you know, in case you're a gamer. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to read what they do because everybody, I think for the most part, knows what they do. Although with that said, there's a lot of things they do that you might not know about. Just um, you probably understand what they do from a high level. It's defense, but there's a lot of little things that they do that you know, same with with Boeing. If you look at Boeing, they're a lot more diversified than just building airplanes. I'm going to play this video. It's about a minute long, and I think it's it's a good watch. So, at Lockheed Martin, we're on a mission, your mission, not just the next mission, but the one that's two steps ahead the one that depends on solving problems before they happen. Our mission is to prepare you for the future by engineering advanced capabilities today so that you can protect what matters most. That's why we've not only taken the lead in hypersonics, but we're helping you integrate that technology faster than ever. It's why we're not only developing the laser weapon systems you'll need, but deploying them laser. in the field. It's why we've coded cyber readiness into everything we do. It's why we created Orion, the only spacecraft that can take humans to the moon, Mars, and beyond. Why the next generation fighter is ready to help you protect the generations to come. And why we've already built autonomous technology and artificial intelligence that advance human ability. The multi-domain battle space of the future is already here, and there's no time to waste. No time to play catch up. New age threats require new age capabilities. And that's why at Lockheed Martin, our mission is to build the integrated solutions you can depend on. Because the world is depending on you. <laughs> if that doesn't, if that doesn't say on the company, I, you know, I probably won't do a good job of it. That's, it's, you know, that pretty much sums it up for me. Um, obviously, you know, that that's not a reason to go buy the stock. But in terms of selling you on the idea that you should go research it, I'm excited. Let's go look, you know, let's this company is exciting to me. Now, is it, you know, is, is it a, a good buy here? Um, does it have the fundamentals to back it up, of course? So, but uh, let's just take a look at who we are. Um, leadership and governments. I want to go to what we do. Here we go. Autonomy and artificial intelligence. Now you saw on that video, they mentioned that. And again, for me being a, a tech type guy, um, you know, I, I want to watch this video too, but we just watched one, but they're, they're really spending a lot of R and D into artificial intelligence. And I think that's going to be you know, pretty critical for their business moving forward. You can see all the different things that they're working on. I think their website's pretty impressive. So if you're interested in this company and you want to do some more due diligence, 
I definitely encourage you to come take a look at this. Um, literally Star Wars, uh, a lot of this technology is not fully baked out. Some of it, um, you know, they, they, they do have kind of phase one, but they literally want, you know, as you saw in the video to, to be able to shoot laser beams from the sky. And it, it sounds, you know, like something out of a sci-fi movie, but it, it actually is, is going to be a reality, um, not very far in the distant future here. So what we do, you know, they have everything from um, so directed energy, hypersonics. This is all their advanced technology. I really encourage you to look at this because the advanced technology is, is really exciting in terms of future growth opportunity for them. Uh, as far as the things that you probably know them best for, you think of their aircrafts and their manufacturing, you know, you could spend a lot of time, um, you know, looking at all the different things that they do. There's quite a bit. I want to go to the aircraft. So here's the different aircraft. You're probably familiar with a lot of these, but so like the Black Hawk, you've heard of the movie Black Hawk Down. <laughs> that's that's a Lockheed uh, Martin, you know, helicopter. There's the Galaxy, the F-16. I'm sure you've heard of the F-35s, the F-22 Raptor, um, F-21. I mean, a lot of these are just, you know, very well known aircraft throughout the um, the aerospace, you know, industry. There's the X-59. There's uh, the X-2 technology. That's something I'm not familiar with. The U-2 Dragon Lady. There's some really cool stuff in here, though. Um, a lot of different, not only jets, but helicopters. I wanted to go to the F F-35 Lightning II. Let's dig into this one. What's cool about it is you can go in here and they've got, you know, all these videos. But here's delivering transformation, transformational capabilities to the fight. And it talks about dominating the battle space, uh, strengthening the coalition, providing the advantage across multi-domain spectrum, the F-35 capabilities, drive a more lethal force. I mean, obviously, you know, I don't like war any more than the next person, but defense is important. And it's something that, you know, is very investable because it's not, unfortunately, it's, it's not going anywhere, you know? So if, if you're looking for a good, um, you know, a good stock within the industrials, aerospace and defense is probably one of the first places that, that I would go to where, you know, you can count on that, whether the economy is good or bad, it's probably going to perform well in both a, a bull or a bear market. So they have, you know, here's the flight hours, you know, they've got 190,000, there's 17 bases, 790 pilots, 7,200. That's just for, you know, this one, this, this one aircraft, 380 aircraft. <laughs> you can spend so much time on this website because every one of these you can drill into and take a look at. Um, and I think it's important just to have an under, understanding as an investor of, you know, what's, here's the electronic warfare, there's energy, you could literally spend hours on here. There's so much information. I had a question earlier today from somebody and they said, how do you, you know, what do you mean you, you join the investor calls? How do you, how do you do that? Pretty much any publicly traded company guys, if you go to the website and a lot of you already know this, bear with me if you already know it, there's always an investors link pretty much. And it's usually at the bottom, but you can find it. It might be down here or up here in this case. And you, go, you come in the investor relations, or you can just Google like investor relations plus whatever company you're looking for. And you can come in here and you can get press releases. Um, you can find, you know, usually the, here's the earnings, right? So you want to see, view all, accept cookies. Here's the 2019, um, here's a podcast, here's the presentation slides. And I, you know, anything that I'm going to buy, especially if I'm going to buy a large position or anything that I own that I own a you know, decent position on, uh, I'll usually listen to the earnings calls as much as I possibly can. Uh, it does take a lot of time. A lot of times you, I do them live. Sometimes you have to watch them or listen to them on the weekend as a recording. But here's, here's the fourth quarter in full uh, year 2019. This, this should be part of your due diligence on every single stock you buy. You need to come in and look at all the financials, get a good idea of the threats, the weaknesses, the SWOT, you know, SWOT analysis of a company. You know, this is a huge company, $59.8 billion in 2019. That's a staggering amount of money. Um, achieved, you know, record backlog for six consecutive quarters. Of course, you want backlog because that means, you know, you've got orders that you need to fill and you have a constant, um, you know, pipeline, a sales pipeline to fulfill. Here's the, the sales and segment operating profit. 
these are record numbers. You can see big yellow record sign, you know, plus 11% plus 12%. I really regret not buying this sooner. Uh, it's still on my shopping list. I always say, you know, when it goes down, I'm going to buy it, but you know, it's kind of like, you know, Pepsi and a lot of these other ones. Um, you know, you wait for them to go down. They never seem to go down. A lot of times quality, you know, there's a premium for it. But I mean, look at this backlog, guys. Um, you know, 144, and this is in billions. Yeah, so, I mean, that's that's a lot of backlog. And you can see every year it grows. I don't really see that slowing down anytime soon. Here's the dividends. They're, they're very focused on dividend growth. They've been, you know, increasing their dividend for quite a while. Um, Here's kind of a, I really like these kind of pie charts. You know, it shows what they're doing in terms of, of profit and sales. So you got your aeronautics, your space, your RMS, your uh, MFC. And you can dig into this, you know, spend hours and hours and hours. Here's all the, the non-gap measures. So that's pretty much all we're going to cover on, on Lockheed Martin. But that stock, again, is uh, Lockheed Martin Corp. Take a look at it. There's a lot of information on the website. It's a really good website. Um, stock ticker on it is LMT. All right, guys. Next is number three, and it's Honeywell. Stock ticker HON. This is a really exciting company. I, I, when you look at what they do in all the different segments, they have a lot going on. And uh, I, I saw their CEO not long ago. I think it was on Bloomberg or CNBC. And he was impressive to me. I think he was actually at Davos, they did an interview with him and he seems, you know, he, to me, it, it, the CEO presence to me, when I listen to a CEO, CEO talk, there's some CEOs like snap CEO where I never bought any snap stock because I just couldn't stand the CEO, even though the, the stock went up 200 or 300%. I just, I, I still don't own snap. I just, you know, I, I can't see that guy, <laughs> you know, managing my money and managing a business. And no disrespect for anybody that knows them or whatever. That's just me personally. Um, but Honeywell has a great, you know, CEO in my mind, at least he represents himself, you know, carries himself well. And the performance has been there. Uh, the 52 week performance is only 21%. But you have to remember, this is a very established uh, business. It's a very large cap at $129.46 billion. It does pay about a 2% dividend yield. The PE ratio is uh, 21.5. Um, and it looks like they just set regular quarterly dividend at 90 cents a share. That's something I hadn't seen yet. They are, uh, in the industrials of course, and they're considered an industrial conglomerate as well. Um, one thing I like about them is that not only they have software, but they also do aircraft and vehicles. And so if you go to their website, you can see, I like the fact that they're in aerospace and defense because I, I do like that. Uh, that that segment, but they also do a lot of different things like chemical and materials. They do buildings and cities, manufacturing, retail, safety, sporting. Because they're very diverse, which obviously, if you're too diverse, it can be bad. But in, in these guys' case, they've been doing it for a long time. So, like the thermostats in my house are all Honeywell. They do a lot of really cool stuff, and this is one thing I wanted to highlight today. Um, this is for buildings and cities. So, from skyscrapers to stadiums to shopping centers drive connectivity, productivity, and security for everyone. And it's really cool. They have software and, um, you know, if you look at like a connected hospital, what's a connected hospital? I was reading this last night doing some prep work for this. I'm going to zoom in. I apologize if anything hasn't been zoomed into this point. Better zoom out because my face might be covering that corner there. What is a connected hospital? Uh, this is from June of 2018 on their website, but it talks about hospitals are unique because people pass through them, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's with, with so much activity, it's no surprise that vis visiting a hospital can be overwhelming. Luckily, connectivity can bring that experience with doctor's appointments. So it, it's using Internet of Things. So that, again, this is right down my alley. You start talking about you know software as a service or Internet of Things, mobile devices. And they, for example, the Ontario-based London Health uh, Sciences Center received complaints about overcrowding at a clinical facility, the hospital network, which covers 1.9 million square feet and serves over 1 million patients a year, implemented the new Honeywell Vector Space Sense at the facility. Though mobile, or through mobile app inputs, sensors, and smart lights, and Bluetooth beacons, 
uh, the personnel, the employees are better able to understand how patients and employees use the building. The solution revealed what was happening in certain areas at specific times. This insight has helped them inform space usage allocation, scheduling, striking the balance between efficiency and comfort, enabling the hospital to provide the highest level of care possible and make everyone more comfortable. It comes down to, you know, analytics and visibility in your business. This is a big push for every industry. Um, digital transformation, you'll, you'll hear it called. But the fact that Honeywell is doing this on an industrial side, I do like their growth potential from that. There's obviously a lot of other things that they do, which, which are exciting, and I'm not going to go through all the different segments. But I did want to point this out. You can come to their website, and you can look at all the different industries that they work in. Um, the aerospace and defense is another one that I really like. And they do things like software within that. Um, they also have, you know, actually, they're working on flying taxis, uh, all kinds of cool stuff. So, you know, obviously, they have established business segments that they've done really well with for a number of years. They've been around for a very long time. Uh, but they also have a lot of future growth opportunities as well. And I wanted to see what year these guys. So 1985 is when they were incorporated and they're headquartered in Charlotte, North Carolina. Take a look at Honeywell. I've liked this one for a long time. I also have never owned this one and it's been on my shopping list for, I think since 2017 and I still haven't pulled the trigger. The stock ticker is H-O-N. All right, guys, number four is Ingersoll Rand PLC. That's I-R is the stock ticker. And this one actually is a really good company and it's it's been around a while as well. It's it's about a one and a half percent dividend yield, a little bit higher on the P ratio, another decent performer at forty point three three percent on the fifty-two week. Um, you know, these these guys are really a true industrial play where they do manufacturing and, and commercial. And one thing I you know I like to look at is leadership. Uh, management's really important when I, I when I pick a stock to buy. It's also good to understand if the employees like working there. For example, NVIDIA is a company where the employees don't leave. If you do some research on NVIDIA, the chip maker, um, the tenure there is very long. People love working there. They have a great um, work-life balance. And, um, you know, it's a great place to work. People line up to to want to work for a place like NVIDIA, and they get top, top talent. And that's important because uh, continued growth and success of a business you need talent and you need to have, you know, continuous talent coming in and wanting to work for your organization. So obviously that's a lot easier to find in the tech space today. We're not focused on tech. We're focused on industrials and materials, but the, the nice thing about it is uh, here's a Yahoo finance article about Ingersoll Rand being named one of the most admired companies by fortune. And I'm not going to read it, but the fact that they've been one of the world's most admired companies by fortune for the eighth consecutive year never hurts when you're trying to get talent to work for you. So I do, uh, I do respect that very much. And it is not, not a reason to buy a stock by itself, but it certainly helps when you're making your overall decision and you're doing your due, due diligence on a particular uh, stock. I like their website because they have this one page and this is all I'm going to cover for Ingersoll Rand, but it gives you a really good snapshot right here, bang of what they do. Club Car, they have the Ingersoll Rand products, Thermo King, a lot of you probably know what this is, Train, American Standard, ARO. So the Club Car is obviously for golf. Ingersoll Rand does compressor, compressor systems, power tools, lifting and material handling. This Club Car also has things like golf operations and online configuration. Thermo King, is, so that does temperature control systems for semi-trucks when they're, you know, refrigeration systems for hauling produce, things like that. Train, they have residential and commercial. So for your, uh, your air conditioner, you might have a train air conditioner. Um, American Standard, which also does things like air conditioning and heating. And uh, ARO, ARO is fluid intelligence. And then, uh, I lied, I'm gonna click this anyway. Portfolio Brands, American Standard, Ameristar, Aero. You've probably seen uh, some of these companies. So. They have a very diverse product line as well, um, and it makes sense. I mean, it's it's all within, you know, the, it's not it's not diverse where it's it's you know like the first one with uh, with Roper where it's, you know, doing software and all kinds of different segments. This is very focused on industrial, um, you know, areas lines of business, 
but there's a lot of different, you know, products and services and areas within that. So, um, it's one that I definitely would recommend taking a look at. It says here through all our brands and a hundred year old tradition of technological innovation. I want to see what it says here on fidelity for the, the, uh, the age. So this one was founded in 1871 and Swords, Ireland. So this is an Irish. That's why it's a PLC. So obviously, one thing to note on on those, um, you know, taxes may be unique depending on where you live and things like that. Um, you know, but sometimes there's foreign taxes and things. So something to maybe look into. Um, but it is, you know, if it's in a, a Roth IRA or something, you don't generally have to worry too much about any kind of tax uh, issues. You shouldn't have to worry about it at all. And uh, on a, you know, on a rollover or 401k, you know, when you do um, decide to take the money at retirement, then, you know, there could be some small fees on there, but uh, take a look at it. It's a 1.46% dividend yield. So it's not a huge yield anyway. Um, but it's something to, to keep in mind when you're, when you're looking at stocks. Um, if it's not, you know, if it's not a U.S. based company, sometimes there can be tax ramifications. So look into that if you're not sure. Uh, obviously, you can call your broker and talk to you know, Fidelity or, you know, TD Ameritrade or whoever you're with. You can also talk to your, um, your CPA or your financial advisor if you work with one of those guys. So anyway, take a look at this one here. Ing Ingersoll Rand stock ticker is IR. All right, guys, moving along to number five. I'm going to throw you a little bit of a curveball here because this is a small cap. It's about a $2.5 billion small cap. It's in the materials uh, sector this time, so it's a little bit uh, different from the ones we've talked about previously before this, and it's uh, focused really on chemicals. It only pays about a 1% dividend yield, but it's performed very well, about a 44% return over a 52-week. It is a little bit higher of a PE. Looks like they've beat their earnings per share, uh, six cents, two cents, and 15 cents. This one is located in Inglewood, uh, Colorado, and it was founded in 1938, so it's been around a long time. It's in the materials sector, and the industry is chemicals. Go to their website really fast and about us. So this is InnoSpec's website. Now, if you're, if you're, uh, you know, if you're not looking to invest in anything that's related to oil and gasoline, this might not be a great pick for you. I personally don't invest in, in a lot of energy stocks just because they haven't performed well over the last decade or so. But this one is a little bit unique because of, you know, how it's focused. It's, for example, the oil field services, um, you know, they do a full system chemical partner that seamlessly pairs safety and environmental stewardship with, with superior chemical solutions. It also does things like octane additives. Um, so when you think of like jet fuel and things like that. So this is a, you know, a, a pure play by any means. On, uh, on the energy sector, it's really more around chemicals. And they've got things like these performance chemicals, like agrochemicals and the construction, home care, mining, personal care, professional cleaning. So they're very diversified, uh, pages under construction. So maybe they don't have a whole lot of professional cleaning. I'm not even going to edit this out because it's kind of funny. Um, I had gone to that earlier and they had information and now it's gone. So performance chemicals, um, home care. Let's see if they have, so home care. So uh, diverse range of, of, of additives, patented high performance formulations for everyday cleaning products. You know, it doesn't really go into a lot of detail of what that means, but you can see there's everything from um, solvents to modifiers. You know, I, I am not a scientist at all, so I, I don't know, you know, what a lot of this means. And this is one of those companies where I might not personally invest in it just because I don't understand it. You know, I invest in things I, I understand. Even if the, the financials are good and the, and the fundamentals are good, I might not invest in it. It doesn't mean I shouldn't cover it on a video like this because it has performed well. It meets all the, the metrics within, um, you know, the, 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 the uh, DGIF uh, spectrum. So you're looking for those five components of growth. And it certainly does that. And it's performed well. And I don't see any um, red flags when I look at the company. Um, if you look at the chart, it's beautiful. I mean, that's about as good as you can ask for if you're looking for growth. Uh, you know, I had a little bit of a V line here uh, in 2019, and I'm not, I haven't, I haven't dug into it to figure out exactly what that little dip is. But you know, every everybody has their bumps in the road, and they, it looks like they've they fixed the issue and they're trending upwards. A chart like this is what you want to see, though. I mean, it literally. Let's go to a max chart. I like to see the max chart because that. You know, if they've been around that long. So here's, it's still a really nice looking chart. 
you know, 2000, almost every chart you look at seems like it's flat in this decade. Um, you know, a lot of times you'll see it, you know, if it's a tech stock, it's going to be crazy up here, but a lot of times you'll see this coming down here and then it's flat. This was kind of not much of a growth, um, you know, not much, not much growth really happened in this, this time frame. 2008, you got the financial recession, you saw a little drop and then a beautiful chart upwards from there. So you might want to take a look at this one, guys. I don't, I'm not an expert on this company by any means. It does fit the parameters. It looked very interesting to me. Uh, I like having, you know, some different um, options in here and it's a nice small cap within the materials and chemicals areas. So IOSP. Okay, guys, moving along to number six, we're going to stay within aerospace and defense and we're going to go with General Dynamics, stock ticker GD. Obviously, it's a large cap. You've probably heard of it. It's about a $55 billion company, 2.16% uh, dividend yield. It's about a 15.76, uh, a 16 or so PE ratio. It hasn't performed great, um, only a 9.26% on the 52-week. Another thing to note is the five-year dividend growth actually is just slightly under 10%. So this is one we're making an exception on. It's had a pullback, and I think it might be a potential opportunity to look at. Um, it has you know, beat its earnings per share the last three quarters consecutively. And this is one that's located in, uh, in Falls Church. So this is in Falls Church, Virginia, headquartered in 1952. When you think of General Dynamics, you think of they've got Gulfstream, which you've probably heard of in terms of you know, you got your G6, your G500, the 600, 650. So Gulfstream is a really popular aircraft that you probably have heard of. They've also got the combat ready in the marine systems, IT and mission systems. So when you talk about combat systems, what General Dynamics is known for is tanks. So they've got the European and they got the regular land systems. Um, they've got like the striker, the light, light armor vehicle, the specialty wheel. Anybody that knows anything about um, you know, military operations and equipment, you know, probably uh, understands, you know, what General Dynamics is known for. So the, you think of the Abrams tank, um, you know, it entered service in 1980 and continues to still be the top tank choice for the U.S. Army, the National Guard and Marine Corps. If you've seen a tank, there's a good chance that's probably a General Dynamics tank. Um, I think that you're going to see you know, it's not, this is not going to perform like a growth stock and you can see it has performed, um, all that great. I think you'll get close to S and P 500 performance, maybe a little bit higher with a decent yield, but it's one that's going to be, in my opinion, more of a safety stock. You know, if you've got a recession, um, a lot of times the defense stocks still do, you know, just fine. If you look at the, the chart on this, it dip, it did dip down in 2008, like most things did. But you can see it's had a nice recovery with a quite a quite a bit of a pullback here. So it fell from two hundred and twenty dollars or so down to one hundred eighty eight dollars. I do think that there's an opportunity, um, you know, in this one. Take a look at it. It's it's not um, technically it's not trading all that great at the moment, but it is a company that I think you know will be around for a long time, and uh, it's one to take a look at. It's certainly. One that should make the list here for industrials. That's General Dynamics, stock ticker GD. Okay, guys, next, if there was such a thing as a cult stock with industrials, uh, it would probably be Southwest Airlines. And I say that kind of sarcastically, but I know a lot of people that love Southwest Airlines. They call it their company jet. They'll only fly Southwest. They won't fly Delta. They bash every other airline. I, I have nothing against Southwest Airlines, but I will tell you that there are some people out there that literally love this company and the stock ticker is LUV. Um, it meets all the parameters guys. And I, I will tell you, this has some risks because just today they, uh, they announced that the 737, the Boeing 737 max, um, will, will basically remove another 65,000 seats during peak travel season. I think they're pushing it out a couple more months. Um, let's just dig into that and see exactly what the time frame is. So it says it won't be back until August 10th of 2020. And um, it was you know, obviously sooner than that before. You know, obviously, you can't blame Southwest for this issue. It's a Boeing issue, but it is a risk for their earnings. Would I buy the stock right here? I probably wouldn't. But if we get some kind of pullback, this thing's sitting at a 52-week high. If you can get a, if, if it pulls back, 
or if you know they have some short-term pain because of this uh, this this 737 Max, it could be an opportunity. So what I would recommend with this this stock is that you put it on a watch list, and it's something that you know you could potentially pick up if it goes on sale. Um, if you absolutely love it, then fine, go buy it. Whatever you want to do, it's, it's you know at the end of the day, anything that you buy is all your decision. I'm just here to give you some information and, and uh, you know hopefully. Uh, help provide some uh, opinion and information. Won't spend a lot of time. We all know what Southwest does. They're not really diversified outside of it. They started to get more into international flights, but they're still not um, by any means close to a, you know, a large international airline like a Delta or United. Um, you know, they, they will do, you know, different things like you can go and get vacation packages. So they'll bundle things that way. Um, Winter Storm Mabel. What's this? I'm actually curious. Wednesday, February 12th to 13th. Buffalo, Chicago, Midway. Well, get it out of your system. I got to fly to Chicago next week. <laughs> so everybody knows what Southwest is. Take a look at it. Uh, you know, again, it's something to put on your watch list. It does fit all the parameters. Um, some people don't really like to invest in airline stocks. I personally have a very, very small position of Delta Airlines, which uh, coincidentally doesn't fit the the fired model, <laughs> but, but uh, you know these guys, uh, you know they have a good reputation. You, oh, here they go. So they they fly now Mexico, Jamaica, Bahamas, Aruba, Dominican Republic, uh, <laughs> Dominican Republic, uh, Costa Rica, Belize, Cuba, Cayman Islands, Turks and Caicos, and they're based in Dallas, Texas, since 1967. So they've been around a long time. It's a, it's a good airline. It's a good company. A lot of great people work there. A lot of people, um, the people that do work there, most of them really love to work there. Take a look at it. Keep it on your radar. Southwest Airlines, stock ticker, LUV Love. All right, guys, moving along. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. I appreciate, I appreciate your time and attention. Um, APD is the next pick. Stock ticker is APD. It's Air Products and Chemicals, Inc. It is a large cap. It's about a $56 billion company, and it's done really well. It's performed uh, just under 50% over a 52-week. It pays a 2.1% dividend yield. It's just under a 30 PE ratio, so it is a little bit of expen uh, expensive stock. It's got a nice-looking chart, especially when you look at the 5- and 10-year chart. When you go to the max chart, it doesn't look... Nearly as pretty, but here's going back to 2010 or so. It's got a nice trend upwards. Um, these guys are in the materials sector, and the industry is another chemical stock. And these guys provide at atmospheric gases, specialty gases, equipment, and they produce uh, oxygen, nitrogen, argon, uh, rare gases, process gases, hydrogen, helium, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, it's all kinds of specialty gases. So um, these gases are typically used in manufacturing, industrial manufacturing. So, you know, if we are, you know, if the bull run is going to continue, this one could continue to see uh, growth. It's one I would definitely dig into and uh, do your homework on. It looks expensive, but it's performed well. And I'm what you call a fund. I call it a fund tech investors, you know, like what is Fundatech? He's always making up words, DGIF, Fundatech, fired, right? So Fundatech is what I refer to as someone that is a fundamental investor that uses technical analysis to enter and exit positions. Um, I also use technical analysis to do some day trading on the side and do some swing trading for additional um, income. But um, you know, if you look at this one, and this isn't always right, this is just from Fidelity, and you'd have to do way more homework than this, but I kind of like looking at these because it sometimes gives you ideas, and then you can go uh, investigate it yourself, do some more homework on it, and see if, if it makes sense. Well, this one says, if, if basically, if the 245 support mains, that the upside prevails. So we're trading at about 255, and... This is saying it could go all the way up to 283. Will it for sure? You know, absolutely not again. But generally speaking, a lot of times, you know, you'll see it, it might get to this price point before it rolls over. So, you know, it, the RSI is above the neutrality area at 50. And this thing could run up to as high as 283, it's saying. And it could be a nice swing trade. It could be something to hold long. Definitely do some homework on this one. I want you to dig into the website, look at the financials. 
but it is one that came up that performed very well. You'll see when I do the comparison at the end here of the 10, this is one of the top performers. I had to include it in the list. Take a look at it. Air Products and Chemicals, Inc. Stock ticker APD. Okay, guys, the next one, number nine, is an enter at your own risk stock that if the, the bull market is going to continue and we're going to have another cycle, you need Caterpillar in order to make that happen. If you see a house being dug or a, a mall being built, you see those big yellow machines out there that are you know, digging up dirt, bulldozers and scrapers and blades and all the different things. Most of those are going to be Caterpillar. And there's other brands. There's Ryobi and there's John Deere. But, but honestly, guys, if you're talking about new streets, you know, new home uh, construction projects, Caterpillar pretty much dominates that industry and has for a long time. It's trading at a 13 PE ratio. It has performed terribly. Um, ugly chart, 5%. Pays a 3% yield, which is good. Um, $139. And if you look at this this chart, here's a five-year chart. It hasn't really done much at all. So I remember I bought it for like 90 bucks, and I sold it somewhere in here. And it's been on my radar ever since, but I just I don't feel comfortable necessarily going back into it. With that said, if you know anything about, um, you know, cyclicals and how those work number one and two if you look at technicals i mean this is basically in a consolidation channel for two years 2018 to 2020 at some point this thing could could skyrocket it really could it could it could, it could easily you know it's a 13 p ratio it could trade up to 16 or 17 and it wouldn't be surprising at all um so it's one to, I think, keep on your radar and do some more homework on. It obviously has done really bad because when you, you know, when you look at the trade war, I mean, look, missed by 29 cents by 22. But this last quarter, they beat by 25 cents. So is it a turnaround? I don't know. But I'm telling you, if you see asphalt pavers, if you see utility vehicles, you know, skitters, all these different things that you see on your screen here, anything construction related, there's a good chance it's going to be that yellow color and uh, that it's going to be, you know, a caterpillar. So, in fact, I wasn't going to go to the website, but in case you don't know what I'm talking about, let's just look at one of their, you know, there's their logo. And to me, it's iconic. Um, caterpillar, who we are. You know, you, you see that yellow color on those different pieces of equipment. And that is, uh, you know that's a giveaway that it's a caterpillar. So I want to look at brands. So they have these different brands. They've got cap financial and all these different things. They do solar turbines, but here's what they're known for. These big old industrial vehicles, you know, um, here's a bunch of different photos. Let me zoom this in. Okay. This looking more familiar. If, if you, you know, haven't seen it, I mean, they, they, they do more than just, you know, bulldozers and stuff, but you can see there's some good, Photos. I wish they had more, but th this is when I think of Caterpillar. You know, this is the what I see in my mind. In fact, they're building houses all around me in a new development here, and and literally these machines are everywhere. So, I had this on my top twenty for two thousand twenty idea list. It uh, hasn't done anything at this point, but I would keep it on your radar because I, I think it's somewhat of a value play at a three percent yield. And again, if 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 the um, if the world economy is going to go into another leg of the bull market, Caterpillar should benefit from that. And it's very cyclical. So if you go into a bear, this thing gets brutalized in a bad way. If you've read any, um, you know, some people aren't a fan, but Jim Cramer has got uh, a couple different books and he talks about Caterpillar a lot. Um, you know, be being before the internet existed in the capacity that it does today, they had to study a lot differently. And you know, you would look at you would look at Caterpillar if Caterpillar he would go on earnings calls. Jim Cramer back when he was, um, you know, I think he worked at Goldman Sachs or whatever. He was a Wall Street guy, and he would go on to Caterpillar earnings calls and you know old school phone calls, not WebEx. And if Caterpillar was killing it, then there were certain you know indicators where he would buy other stocks that would you know that basically meant that the cycle was starting to ramp up because their orders are becoming 
the orders for Caterpillar are going to happen before you see the growth actually occur because you need the equipment, you need to buy the equipment and you need to build, you know, before you're actually going to see, it's kind of a, a, a down, a downwind type of a economic activity. So Kramer would actually use Caterpillar to gauge what to buy and, and made a living off of it. So it is a very, very cyclical stock. And it's one to, to keep an eye on because if this starts performing really well, you're going to see a lot of other stocks and, and, and industries and segments benefit from that. You can see here, I want to show you this. So this is 2008 before the, 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 the Great Recession, right? The financial collapse. And they had um, the price on this at, at that point was about 80 bucks. It dropped to $30 and it's recovered back slowly over time to 140. But this thing also came up here in 2014. It was a $90 stock and dropped all the way down to 67. And this will follow these huge cycles. So buyer beware with this stock because if you don't, if you, if you buy it at the wrong time, especially if you're, not a long-term investor, you know, this, this uh, stock like this can bury you because you can lose 50% <laughs> if you go into a bear market. So be careful with this one, but I'm telling you, if, uh, if things go the way they're supposed to, let, let's just say, for example, that, you know, nothing political, but if Trump wins, he's big on infrastructure. So if he, if he wins this next election, you're going to have, you know, you're going to have infrastructure growth. There's going to be more orders of Caterpillar. The stock is going to benefit. This might not be a long-term hold for the next decade if we don't have a bull market for the next decade. So I want to make sure that I, I make myself very clear on that. But if we, if, if we do, um, you know, some people are saying that we still have five or 10 years left and, and a stock like Caterpillar could benefit. So keep it on your, on your radar. Again, it's Caterpillar, stock ticker, CAT, C-A-T. All right, guys, the 10th pick. And then after this, stay tuned because I'm going to do a comparison of all these 10 stocks that we covered. And then after that, I'll give you a couple bonus picks. This one, I want to keep things interesting. And this certainly does throw a monkey wrench into the group. You can see that it only pays a 0.13% dividend yield and that it has a 53P ratio. But you also see that it has a 40.3% 52-week. And not only does it have a 40.3% 52-week, it actually has performed at 31% over a 10 year annualized return, which is phenomenal. It basically is like, uh, performs like a growth stock. It's an industrial and it's a medium cap at about $17 billion. Um, I'm gonna get, show you the max chart cause it's gonna be a volatile stock. This, this trades, I mean, look at that thing, but this, this does not trade like an industrial stock. Um, what they do is they manufacture, sell aerospace, defense, and electronic related products and services in the United States internationally. So if we're spending billions of dollars on aerospace and defense, well, then a company like Heiko Corporation, HEI, is going to benefit from that. I had never heard of them before. They're in aerospace and defense, but the unique thing about them is that they, um, they basically develop products that go into the airplanes. You know, they're not actually creating the airplanes themselves. Um, the yield is ridiculously low, but you'll also see that the, the, div the, the dividend growth is really high, and so is the performance of the overall um, stock on the 10-year annualized return. So I had to include this because it actually was number one on all the metrics. The only thing it didn't have was a very significant yield. So if you're looking for a high yield, this is not it, but if you want a dividend growth investing stock that, is, uh, that performs like a growth stock, and that will probably be around for a long time. This is one to look at. And I think it's one where if you put it in your portfolio in 10 years, it might surprise you um, what you could get on a return. Now, obviously, a lot, just like a lot of things, this has risk because if, uh, you know, the next president, you know, say Trump doesn't win the election and, and, and the next president doesn't have an appetite for defense, the defense you know, budget could be cut. And then, you know, a lot of these stocks that we're talking about today within the aerospace and defense industries um, could suffer for that. So the reason that this one has done well is because we've been spending more and more money in this area. But let's just look at, so they do all kinds of stuff from flight support, the parts, the repair. They also do electronic um, 
technologies. They also have sub subsidiaries, but so they actually repair the equipment and they create it. So you think of, um, let's just go into the, so you can go, so this is capabilities they have just for engines. So they can, they can, you know, literally anything in here, they have parts where they can repair it or replace it. You know, you could enter a part number in here and do a search and these guys develop parts. So think of it like as a AutoZone or a Napa Auto Parts for big old, you know, aerospace and defense companies like Boeing and things like that. So um, since 2002, our customers have saved $2 billion using Heiko parts and repairs. Over 50 customers each saving a million annually. So as companies are trying to cut costs, you know, they might buy um, from a Heiko that is a lower, you know, price point than say buying directly from, you know, the main manufacturer. So, um, you know, it, it's just like, like I mentioned before, like AutoZone or Riley or any of the auto parts stores, they all have kind of the same product, but they're all made in a different factory. So same kind of deal here. Take a look at this one though. I think it's an exciting one um, in terms of a growth play and, uh, you know, doesn't have much dividend, but they have been increasing it. So it's one that, um, you know, it, it could be a good one for you in the long term. The dividend is very small. It's an eight cent dividend. Um, don't laugh at me. And that's why it's number 10. But these kind of stocks, you hold them for five, 10 years. Um, you know, it can end up being, you know, over a 1% dividend yield, but performing at 30% over and over every year. Um, for me, it's all about how much the, the asset returns uh, all together. And, uh, you know, I play yield in a lot of different ways. So I'll add an AT&T to a stock like this so that I have a, a combined yield of a 3% a yield and things like that. So anyway, take a look at this one, Heiko Corp, H-E-I. All right, guys. So as promised, I wanted to give you a comparison of the 10 picks today. And there were a lot of picks that could have actually made uh, the top 10. But these are the ones that I wanted to, to cover today. And I, I thought were most exciting. Um, I'll get to a couple bonus picks after this, so please do do stay tuned. So first, let's look at here's the ten the ten picks, and let's go through them. So Caterpillar, Lockheed Martin, General Dynamics, Air Products and Chemicals Inc., Honeywell, Ingersoll Rand, Southwest Airlines, Inospec, Roper Technologies, and Heiko Corp. Now the dividend yield. Let's let's first look at that. Caterpillar has the highest dividend yield at two point nine five percent. Then. Lockheed Martin with 2.2, General Dynamics has 2.16, APD, which is the industrial gas uh, company we talked about, is uh, 2.11, Honeywell is just under 2%, Ingersoll Rand's about 1.46%, Southwest is 1.23%, IOSP is just at 1%, Roper is only half percent, but has great growth, as you can see, and HEI is 0.13%. Uh, now, what's exciting about, and I'm not sure, you know, the dividend payouts aren't coming out on a couple of these, which is a little bit frustrating, and it happens sometimes on Fidelity. Um, but you can, you know, you can take a look. I'm not going to spend five more minutes looking at dividend.com, you know, or, or even um, seeking alpha or something to give those. But all the payout ratios are within line. The Caterpillar one actually is a little bit higher. I like it 50% or less, and Caterpillar is at 5173 it also has the highest yield, and this is one where you make an exception. Of course, the sub-industry here is construction machinery and heavy trucks. Um, it also has a lower than 10% dividend, uh, five-year dividend growth rate average, and it also hasn't performed well at 12.55%. So Caterpillar is one that really isn't the best fit in the world, but I, I like it just because it's so well-known, and I think it has potential... Um, as a, you know, as a value play. So you do what's right, you know, best for you. If I were to pick, you know, the, the top stocks and I'm looking for a, a nice balance of yield and growth, you know, I really like the uh, aerospace and defense, so like a Lockheed Martin or, you know, a general dynamics, um, the Lockheed Martin actually. So let's, let's, let, let's do this next. We'll go through the dividend growth five year average. So, Southwest Airlines actually has the highest at 25%. And you can see HEI is the second. HEI is great. It has a low dividend yield, but it also has increased the dividend by 17.42%. Uh, and the 10-year annualized return on HEI 
is 31.45%, which is, that's a killer. And same, you can see uh, there's quite a few that are, are pretty high. But the, this dividend growth rate, um, you know, Southwest is a pretty good dividend growth rate, 25%. HEI is is good, but obviously the yield's so low. Ingersoll Rand is is pretty, you know, pretty acceptable. It's it's a sixteen percent five year dividend growth rate with a one and a half percent yield, twenty two percent on the ten year annualized return, and it's just under you know forty seven percent on the payout ratio. Um, you can go down the line, but you can see that the both Lockheed Martin is just under ten percent on the five year dividend growth, and CAD is only at eight percent. So you know, 9.86%. You'd like to see that a little higher, of course. Um, you know, but with, with Lockheed Martin, it's got growth drivers. It's got a 23% 10 year, 10 year annualized return, and it's got a 2.2% yield. Now let's, let's look at the top for the, uh, annualized return. You can see HEI is the first followed by IOSP, then Lockheed, then Roper, uh, Ingersoll Rand, Honeywell, and so on. Um, and then the dividend payout ratio isn't really the best comparison since some of those don't actually pull up. But I do want to point out that if you go to the low end here, so Roper only pays out, according to Fidelity, a 5.5% payout. And they've been growing it at a 15.44%. They're at a half percent, but they've also, you know, they the 10-year annualized return is 23%. I think Roper is is one of the more exciting picks out of this group. I think HEI is kind of more of your, if you're looking for more of a growth play. Roper, I think, is a great balance. It has a lower yield, but it's going to probably perform pretty well. And then the the really good kind of middle-of-the-road fits are going to be, um, you know, of course, the uh, the Lockheed Martin's probably one of my favorites on there. I think Honeywell's got, um, you know, some good stats on it. It's a 20% annualized return, 2% yield. It's got a low dividend payout ratio at 41%. Dividend growth could be higher. It's only 11.7, but it's still above the 10 that we like to see. It is acting very bullish, which interestingly enough, most of these are neutral except for um, Lockheed Martin and Honeywell. So these are probably two of my favorite uh, picks out of here. But I do like the, the, the blend. You can see you've got industrial gases, you've got construction uh, heavy trucks, you've got industrial machinery, aerospace and defense. Um, and these guys are way more focused on, you know, on, on the, the air and the, you know, space in terms of like the laser beams and stuff like that. Whereas you look at a general dynamics, um, you know, they're much less diversified than a Lockheed Martin and they're more into like the tanks and the, the Gulf stream. So they're a lot different, even though they're both in the same sub industry and then HEI, you know, that's parts. So even though it's also an aerospace and defense, it's quite different. And then you have the uh, the two industrial conglomerates, Honeywell and Roper. But with Honeywell, you know, it, again, you saw you saw the dif the differences earlier. There's quite a bit of difference between those two. Roper is a bunch of small kind of unknown um, software companies that do very niche things. Where Honeywell is doing some very diverse things on a, a very large scale with hospitals and things like that. And then you've got a nice round off here with specialty chemicals. So, and you got airlines with Southwest. So very, very good. I think mix of, uh, of not only, only sector, but sub industry and uh, different market caps as well. You've got large cap, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six large caps, which is really interesting. There's only two mega caps on this one. And then there's a medium cap and there's a small cap. So very diverse group there. Hopefully that gives you 10 ideas to look at. I will give you a couple of bonus uh, picks. So stay tuned and I'll, I'll have those coming up next. If you're watching this far, I appreciate you very much. There's, there's about 50 or so people that will watch every minute of every video. And I, I can't thank you enough. Um, obviously I'm, I'm crazy like that. Sometimes I question, <laughs> you know, why, why I even do this, um, in my spare time. But, you know, I, whenever I commit myself to something, I always go crazy and, and, uh, just put everything I have into it. And, you know, I, I promise, you know, as this channel grows, as we get more subscribers and more views, I'll put more capital into it, improve the quality. And I'm always open for feedback and suggestions. So never hesitate to comment on the video, to come to the Facebook group, 
You can ping me privately. You can send me an email. There's a million ways you can contact me if you have a question or if you've got a concern or if you've got some feedback for me to improve. But, you know, I've, I've put money into um, different recent equipment for audio, for video, for lighting. I'm trying to make it better for you guys, make it more entertaining. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm doing my best. And I know that no matter how good you do something, you can always improve on it. But I do appreciate you very much. I wanted to cover some bonus picks and you know there's <laughs> i'll be honest with you too, full full disclosure so this has been an interesting video because in you know industrials and materials they're not there's not a lot of of, of companies that i've invested in in this sector in these sectors um so full disclosure there if you were um if you were to to pick in this sector you know for me anyway roper uh technologies i'm a tech guy to me, it looks like a pretty attractive company. It's probably one of your, you know, nothing's guaranteed, but I would say that's probably one of the safer ones just, you know, for me, if I were to put money to work. And then, uh, you know, Honeywell and anything in the uh, aerospace and defense. I did want to mention, too, that, uh, you know, Raytheon could have been a good fit. And you've got um, United Technologies, UTX, RTN, and UTX. There's going to be a merger. So um, you want to be involved with that in some capacity. Uh, I didn't didn't necessarily know how to cover that in the top 10, but it is important. Um, do some homework on that and decide uh, what route you want to go. But you should be involved in that acquisition. It's going to be, I think, a pretty powerful acquisition uh, and, a, and a good, you know, good partnership. And if they can figure out all the, you know, management uh, overlap and things like that, I think there's a huge opportunity there. And that could easily be one of the top or the top pick. Uh, in this entire in this entire sector, it would be, of course, aerospace space and defense. You could look at things like um, well, so paychecks and ADP. Those are considered technology plays. But honestly, guys, I mean, I, I'm going to do three more videos and one of them is going to be tech, technology and I'm probably going to have communication services lumped together in that. So communication services would be, you know, your cell phone providers, Twitter, Snap, Facebook, there's no way that ADP or paychecks is going to make the list. And depending on where you look, it falls in different, um, you know, sectors, but take a look at paychecks and ADP, even though they're software plays uh, to me, they kind of, they kind of cross in, into other sectors and could be a possible play. I also like L3 Harris technologies. That was one of my top 20 for 2020 plays. It's actually up, I think close to 15% or 12% maybe this year. That one does actually have a solid uh, dividend and a solid track record. They do a lot of radio equipment, things like that. And I do like that company a lot. It was a, a merger between L3 Technologies and Harris. And, you know, when I looked up, there, there were some questions on the dividends. Um, so it didn't didn't make the top 10. But it's, it is one actually that I own. It's one of the few that I own um, that is actually in industrial. So look at L3 Harris. I also like um, UPS, although the metrics don't really fit in terms of the, the dividends and the growth and all that. So it's not a true DGIF. But if you're looking for high yield, UPS could be a potential bonus play. And then the other one I wanted to mention, which is considered leisure products and be more in the consumer discretionary, would be Polaris. And that's a Minnesota-based company. You know, They make uh, four-wheelers and things like that. Where I live in the Midwest, you see Polaris um, UTVs for farm equipment where people will use those to check cattle and things like that. So to me, it is, you know, it's kind of a cross between, um, you know, consumer discretionary and industrial because, you know, it, it's equipment that you're using for, uh, you know, agriculture industry. But, you know, obviously a lot of people buy the, the four wheelers to, you know, to have fun and to tear up, tear up mud or whatever. Most of the time they just drive around my development and uh, make loud noises and piss me off. But um, but anyway, <laughs> I digress. Polaris, though, to me, is one that could easily fall in the industrials, and it's actually a really solid company. It's a really great DJI play. You'll probably see it on Seeking All Full Out. So take a look at that one, because I can assure you it probably won't, it won't fit into the consumer. Consu I'm doing consumer staples and consumer discretionary in one video, and I doubt it'll make uh, that list. So there's three videos left. If you haven't subscribed, you know, please do. Um, I'm not sure what order I'm going to do them in. I'm pretty sure I'm going to do technology and communication services last. And then the, the, the other video is going to be consumer discretionary and it's going to be combined with consumer staples. 
And then I'm going to make a video that combines three sectors into one. And that's going to have REITs. It's going to have utilities and it's going to have energy. And I don't do a lot of investing in energy, but it's probably going to have things like NEE and, and you know, and some plays like that. Uh, but I, I combine all three of those together just because um, those are areas I don't do a lot of investing in. And it makes sense to not have more than 10 picks between those three. I pr I'll probably do, you know, three from each sector and, and call that good. Um, but I, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you watching this video. If you haven't stopped by the Facebook group, please do that. Just go on to Facebook, type in Fired Up Wealth. You go ahead and join our group. We have some great dialogue and, and discussion there. Uh, the new video is released every Saturday, and I'm also working on a couple other series. If you have any feedback at all, though, please drop a comment. If you like the video, please hit the like button. Obviously, share uh, the channel with your friends and family. We want to grow this channel as, as big as we can, as fast as we can, so that we can continue to improve the quality uh, of not only the audio and the video, but also the content and make the best possible content that I can create. So thanks again for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Take care.